Port Adelaide are certainly starting to build in 2018. A big win against the Bulldogs following a very big win against the Tigers. They currently sit seventh on the ladder and their coach has joined us on the couch for the first time this year. Welcome to you, Ken. Thanks, Jerry. Have you played your best footy so far this season? I think in patches we've played some really good footy, but we haven't really been consistent. We've probably had 10 minutes here and there that we, we'd be pretty pleased with, but for four quarters, no, I don't think we have. I've seen you uh, many times, and uh, at times when you get the ball going, when you set the Sierra and free, you're, you're virtually unstoppable, and yet you do seem prone to be able to be glued down like the Hawks did to your car, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, look, we, we haven't been able to play at the speed we'd like to play at consistently, but that's, again, a bit of opposition, as you said, what Hawthorne did to us and what we do to ourselves, and we probably freeze a little bit still too much. We're, we're working really hard on ball movement mm. as a club. We've really improved over the last 18 months. Uh, we've still got some room to go there. Just on that, Kenny, do you feel like teams are really targeting Charlie? It seems like every time he goes to the ball, there's two or three. He's been terrific at bringing the ball to ground. He's kicked, what, 12 or 13 goals. But is that part of the opposition and against you, which made a little, maybe a bit harder going forward and perhaps you have to look around at different options as you, you move the ball inside 50? Yeah, Rizzi, we, we certainly spent a lot of time in the off-season trying to make that better for us and improving it. And Charlie's, as you said, he's outstanding at making a contest and, you know, he gets a lot of raps on not making as many marks or kicking as many goals. We like the fact that he competes yep. really hard. He attracts some attention from the oppo, but also from his teammates. He is a big bugger. You know, he's, he's 200 plus centimetres, 110 kilos. He does attract some attention. And we think some of the work we get off him is pretty important as well. You think his form was affected early in the year, though, especially when he had to do a lot of the ruck duties, Kenny? Oh, certainly it's not perfect. You yeah. know, we had Westy and Charlie trying to chop out in the ruck, but we had, you know, what we consider one of the best two or three rucks in the competition unavailable, and right. we had young kids not ready to play that role. Why haven't you played your better footy for longer than 10-minute blocks? You've got a, a list that we all look at now, it seems to tick every box. You've got a beautiful balance of experience, you've got most positions covered. Shouldn't that be coming together more often? I mean, yeah. ideally you'd love it, I know. Yeah, yeah we would, Gary. But the thing, I think the thing you see is that we've got a really young, inexperienced backline still. We brought some new people into the club this year. We've still got, you know, we brought Marshall back into the team this week. You know, we put Lindsay Thomas back in the team. So we've got still a fair bit of understanding of each other to still get on top of. Um, you know, it's, it's halfway through the season. We understand that. But we, we, we think that there's some significant upside still to come. Who sets it? Who sets the tone? I mean, Travis is your captain. Ollie's your vice captain. You've got Robbie Gray. You've got Charlie. I mean, who, who sets that tone? Yeah, I think it's like any club. Your, your better players, your leadership players are the ones that do that for us. Jonas has been enormous for us down back as well. He sets the tone as far as physicality goes for our football club. You know, Wines in his last two weeks. Outstanding. He's had a pretty good year, Ollie, and uh, he's been strong right through. Trav, you know, so there's a number of boys that do it, but you know when they do it together, that's when. And I think last couple of weeks, you've actually seen more of those players play well together, and that's the secret to us. Todd Marshall back into the side, and uh, midway through the first quarter, he got a special treatment from uh, your home crowd. Yeah, it was um, you know, great respect. Toddy's had an, an enormous battle. Yeah over the last little period of time. He's, he's loved by his teammates, obviously by his fans, and you know, everyone understands the, the, the tragedy that he's been through this year, and it's great mm. credit for him to be back out there. He's a bloody exciting player, I know mm. that, and he's got a great future. Yeah, he's upside. I've been really uh, interested in watching his development, but I don't think the football world or the greater footy world realise how good this kid can be as a forward, Kenny. Yeah, he's got some unbelievable weapons. You know, his football intelligence is, is, is great. He does little things. If you watch him closely, little knock-ons and creates opportunities. I think he had six or seven touches the other night. He might have been involved in five scoring opportunities for us yeah. as a team. You know, he's 19, Brownie, and, you know, as yeah. a key forward, they take a little while to get going. But we are, we've been a little impatient wanting him in the side more, but we understand what we've had to deal with. He gets in, Jack goes out. That's just life. Um, he plays, Jack plays his old side Friday night. Does he keep his spot, the young fella? Yeah, total play, total play Jack? this week. Uh, Jack, we'll, we'll, we haven't had the selection yet, but we played pretty well last week. I'd, I'd imagine we'd be pretty close to same. Do you see Jack as a defender at any stage? You've got him for ball movement, among other reasons. You said your back line's inexperienced. He's not an experienced defender, but he's an experienced player. Is there an opening there potentially for him? Oh, look, it's something we consider, but we think we brought Jack to the club for finish, and that's what we're still looking for. We're still looking for finish, and we watched him play yesterday in the Magpies. He played really well, had an outstanding game. His finish in really tough conditions was on show yesterday, and we think he's still got a lot to still learn about the way we play, and that will only help him become a better player. What about the China, I call it experiment, it's not an experiment now, it's been going for a while, but purely from a footy point of view, what are the benefits you get out of that as a coach? I think... 
Ruz, if we look at it from a from the whole club point of view, we go, well, the, the advantages of us is to try and grow revenue as well as everything else that allows us to have a full football program. You know, David and Keith have been outstanding at providing us with a full football program. Some of our challenges is that we have to look for other revenue sources and China's been a great one so far for us to go after and we're still building it. From a football point of view, currently it doesn't worry us. It, it works really well. We've played there two years in a row. We've organised to travel. We know where we stay. Boys have played pretty well when they've been over there and we come off it with a buy. That's the only thing. We come off with a buy earlier in the year, uh, but we manage that through the back end of this year and we give the boys another couple of little breaks. Tell us about your football club. It's one of the most famous football clubs in the land. I met a lot of power supporters over in China. It was fantastic and it was just, uh, it gave you an insight into the club itself. It still seems for want of a better word, very much a family club, if I can use that term. I met the Jonases and they were all travelling together, fantastic footy people. You've been given a five-year tenure, further five-year tenure for this footy club. You, you, you must want to continue to put your own stamp on what is a brilliant club already. Yeah, it's been a fantastic club for a long period of time and, you know, a really successful club in the early days of the Sample and then moving into the AFL. And from my point of view, you see what successful clubs look like and it takes a long period of time to get it to where you actually want it to be. When we start back in 2013, you know, you think back to what the club was like mm. in 2011 when the expansion clubs come in, you know, we didn't get any support or any help in those areas as far as draft picks. Our first pick was pick five, we think we may have finished equal last on the ladder. We end up with Wingard, it's a good pick, but we didn't get any help, but we do stick together as a club. We've been able to build a culture and a development program that helps players become better players and they want to stay. And I think that gives us a great opportunity to success in the future. Beautiful segue into Ollie Wines. Why wouldn't he stay? He will. You're 100% on that. I've said it a few times. I'm so I spoke to him, though, two weeks ago and he hadn't made a decision, he said in his own words. I suppose, Gary, the, the, the thing with that is a coach, you, you know your players really well. I think I know Ollie incredibly well personally. I think he's... Uh, He's committed to the group. You can just see, you know, you can see no, no people question. and you go, you know, he's going to play. You know, he's great mates with some young players at that club. Um, you know, he looks like he's on a path to being captain yep. of the football club. You know, he's, his family are committed to our footy team. Um, it, you talk about the culture of the club. I just feel like Ollie's not going to be leaving the Port Adelaide Football Club. As I said a few times, I'm 100% certain he will stay. I hope I'm not proven Co wrong. Coaches handle those things differently in terms of contracts and obviously you've got managers that get involved. We, do you talk to him directly about that? So look forward to the day you say yes, I'll, that's all. I mean, I, I leave him alone. It's, yeah. it's his choice. And, yeah. and players have op opportunities now to, to see what the market is and, and they've got to set themselves up. I understand all that, but I keep saying if you, you create this culture of a football team that everyone wants to be a part of and no one... Look, we've lost Jarman Impey in my time and, and we, it's pretty well documented why Jar's left. Jacko left at the end of last year for opportunity. We, people want to stay at our football club, and I think that's the only signal that I can look at and go, that's reality, and that's what happened. So how close were you to leaving? No, no. I was. Um, look, you, you always consider options that you, you have, whether you're a player, coach, whatever it may be, but I just said, I talked about Ollie's connection to, the, to his teammates. I can't get any closer to this group than what I am with, with my players, and to leave them would have been incredibly difficult to do, and the reality is I see Geelong... I see Richmond with Dimmer. It takes time and you've got to see it through. So, and I'm, I'm that sort of person that wants to see something through. So the discussions and the tension between you and David Kosh, was, was that about you getting your way? Was it about uh, you making a statement about uh, the absolute club you wanted to leave? What, what created such tension? Oh, no, I don't think it was. Um, I think publicly it gets a bit bigger than what it actually was. David and I get have a great relationship. We, have, we get on really well. There's no problems with any of the stuff that we do. Yep. David holds us accountable and that's great. Because successful clubs, you need some accountability and you need to be striving to become better all the time. I, I don't have any problems with that. And, you know, you just got to make sure that everyone's on the same page. We're, we're invested in what the outcomes are for us as a football club. And we know the outcome is that we're all after. We want to be successful and win a premiership. But we haven't done that as yet. I've got great support, Keith and David, mm -hmm. right through. I've got the, the best football program that I could wish for and it gives us an opportunity. One of my ex-teammates, uh, Tom Rockcliffe, has come into the club this year now. Looked like early in the year, he, he tried to play at the start of the year, probably wasn't fit enough for AFL football. He made the correct decision, decision to put him back into the SANFL. How did he handle that at first, Ken? Uh, he, was, um, he was very good, to be honest, Brownie. Yeah. He, um, you know, Rock is a proud man. He didn't want to go back and play at the Sample level, but he knew that his body was failing him more than anything else and his conditioning for the game. And, gee, we've seen a, a difference. He went back, he played two games there, found a bit of the foot, footy, found a bit of confidence, come back into the AFL, and I think he's, since he's been back, there's been no secret with you know, him, Ryder, 
Power Pepper together, we're certainly starting to go in the right direction. Interested in this relationship thing between you and the players, and Ruzi's here and done it. Um, so would you rather win their heart or their head? If, if it can be cut down. So the head, I mean, tactically, they've got great faith in your ability as a coach and you're reading trends and you're reading it during a game, or would you rather have them emotionally? If you had to choose one or the other, what would it be? As long as they... Um, it's hard to choose one or the other because they have to commit to a game style. So they have to commit to that first and foremost. But they, the first thing that I think a player needs to know is that their coach cares about them. You know, and he's going to provide them with an opportunity to, to get better and have success as a team. I think that's really important to me. Um, I've always said... I think I'm a, a relationship coach. I think I build really strong relationships with my players and I still stick by that, that that's how you get the best out of your players. Yeah. Have you had a more emotional victory than the one we saw this year in the showdown? You won it, you lost it, and then you won it again. You should have got eight points for this game. Yeah, it was, um, it was an amazing game to be involved with and obviously for people who are not in Adelaide, it's such a big build-up mm. showdown and it's a, an incredible game to be a part of. And as you said, to have it won to lose it yep. and then to somehow win it back was just was crazy for us as a, as a club. And you can see on there, it makes you do crazy things, doesn't it? <laughs> as, a Vic, as a Victorian, take us through the week, though, because you're right. I mean, we probably don't. We all know how big football is in South Australia. I've got good mates. We played in the state of origin. But yep. it's probably a similar build-up, I suspect, the state of origin, even bigger to a certain degree. Yeah, there's no bigger game, Ruzi. Uh, the showdown, you know, when we've been, I've been involved, lucky enough in my time at Port, we've been involved with some finals. Our finals games all feel the same like a showdown. Yep. Now they're, they're as big as that. The outcome is, is massive. And, you know, for us, we clearly we were, hadn't won any of the last five and it was pretty big in Adelaide, you know, um, Port Adelaide. We, we don't mind fighting the fight as the underdog a little bit and, uh, you know, we enjoy that, but you do need to mark your territory sometimes. And luckily enough, what a great way to do it. That was an eight-point game in some respects. Um, and Friday night is an eight-point game up against the Demons. Having a look at the ladder, it's uh, incredibly tight at the top. And uh, if you're going to give yourself a chance to win the flag, you can win it from eighth. We know that. You can win it from seventh. But you've got a better chance if you're in that top four. This is a, this is a game that could decide uh, what final you get if you make the finals. Yeah, well, I suppose there's a long way to go. I mean, but it, it is one game that it's certainly significant when you look at the ladder today. But, you know, the, in this footy season, there's going to be some changes still, I reckon. There's going to be some ups and downs. And, you know, but we certainly want to win this game of football to put ourselves up in front of Melbourne and, and other sides because we're, we're sort of, there's probably five or six teams that we're still behind. We haven't yep. played one less game. So it gives us an opportunity. And, uh, you know, Friday night, big stage again for Port Adelaide and our club. It's really important that we play well. And just quickly, Kenny, state of the game chat has been uh, common in the football world at the moment. Where do you see the game at? I know you play a pretty exciting brand of football anyway, and do you anticipate the AFL making any changes to the aesthetics of the game? First, I think the game's OK. I don't think the game's in a terrible state at all. I think, you know, some people, we, we see some stoppages at times. We see some congestion at times. But more often than not, when you see a good game, it's, it's still a pretty good game of football to watch. I think there's no doubt there's going to be some change. There's been too much noise from the AFL to suggest that there's not going to be some change. What that is, I'm not sure. You know, Steve and uh, Steve Hocking and, and the rest there at AFL headquarters will make some decisions. Can you see zones coming in? Yeah, I actually think I can. I think I can hear enough noise that suggests that that might come in. I went and watched um, the under-18s game yesterday in Adelaide and the zones were there and, you know, five people behind centre. You've got to be really, really careful. You know, speaking to Ruzi off air and you go, you get on a difficult conditions, tough ground, wind against you, you might have 10 players not see the ball for a, half, for a quarter mm. and the ball might not move any further than it currently moves. If you leave the game alone, we, we as coaches spend time now lengthening the ground. That's what we like to spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of time thinking about how do we lengthen the ground quickly because we don't want to play in that, that bubble. As you said, we like to play a, a fast brand of football if we can. Just It'll sort itself out. It'll settle itself down again. You know, there's some changes that can be made. I hope they're not too drastic. They need to pay the, blow the whistle quicker though with holding the balls. I still think we're not sure at times okay. when it is holding the ball and when it's not. Right. Now, we talked about it as, in a coaching group last week. I mean, with Vossi, and we were too, not, still not sure what holding the ball looks like. You've noticed a change over the last couple of weeks. I certainly have, particularly on the weekend. Jared and I mm. spoke about it. It just seems that, that the, the ball knocked out in the tackles. Knocked out now. the tackles now, yeah, incorrect disposal, where it was before. As long as you had a you know, tried, no prior opportunity, it just looks like it, there's always a little bit of a change in, in mindset. I suppose watching our game, I probably don't, I didn't feel like that. I think there's some tackles that went unrewarded at times both ways in our game at the weekend. But, um, you know, I think they're, it's, a hard, mm. it's a hard decision, isn't it, holding the ball one when who's got prior, who hasn't got prior. You know, and you, some people, I think, gee, didn't have much time and he's been pinged. But 
Fair to say, Ruzi, you're not a fan of starting positions or... or st oh, I saw it for two years in the TAC Cup. It just doesn't work. And, Kenny, we spoke about before, if it's a windy day, you've got you've four forwards stand down the end of the ground. Brownie be standing there for an hour, you know, Blowing two up. quarters going, well, hang on, I haven't touched the ball. And I'm not sure the coach would be too happy about it. I'm not sure it. it helps the kids either when they get into a system that no, it doesn't. 15 no. blokes in front of them yeah. as opposed to two. Quick one before we let you go. We're accused sometimes of not looking outside our state. How good is Robbie Gray? We, you've seen some great players. You've coached them, you've played with them. How good is he? Uh, he's right up the top. With? Oh, I've been lucky enough to be a, around junior, Gary. Uh, he's an outstanding player. Stevie J, the boys that I think about it, they were Geelong. Robbie's not far away. In fact, he's probably at least equal. Yeah, right. He's a pretty good player. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think on that uh, note, we'll uh, make it a wrap, uh, a fair wrap for Robbie Gray. You've had a pretty good season to date, uh, Ken, but uh, it could be a hell of a lot more exciting. Appreciate you coming over and joining us on the couch. Good luck for the uh, rest of the season. Thanks, boys. Yeah.